What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So I was working with a friend recently and he needed a project done where we needed to do a kind of tire spinning, I think it's called like a burnout, like a tire burnout video. And there's been a bunch of tutorials out there of showing people how to do like these tire burnout videos. I remember back in the day doing one, um, I can't remember who did it, but they did it with like Turbulence FD and there's like ones with like X particles and there's like all these like burnout videos just for like all these third party uh, simulation engines. But now that Cinema 4D has its own simulation engine, I thought I would do a tutorial on show you guys how to do a tire burnout with just normal Cinema 4D. So yeah, um, definitely not an original idea, but uh, I thought it was fun to make and so I thought I'd show you guys how I did it. Seeing as though, you know, there isn't really a just default Cinema 4D tutorial. It's pretty basic, but at the same time, I mean, I guess some people out there don't know it, and hopefully this is for you guys. But yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want the project files on Patreon, you know, all the good stuff. But anyways, um, let's start out by getting a tire. So Cinema 4D has this default tire over here, and this is what we're going to use for the render. Cool. So let's just bring it up. Um, I just want to hide this bend over here just so we can see that. And before we get into anything, let's create a collider on this. If we had to use this as is, it's not great to be honest, uh, especially for like collisions and stuff. It's usually better to have less polygons. So let's grab our tire over here. Let's make a duplicate of it. We can hide the original one. Let's go and throw that into a volume builder and a volume mesher. Ooh, let's set the voxels to like one and then let's raise up our threshold over here do something something like that should be good we don't really need it to have like crazy details this is literally just for a collider of course let's go connect objects and deletes obviously you don't need to do that if you want to keep it procedural you can do that uh but i mean just for the sake of the video i'm just gonna not do it procedurally um let's remesh this and let's maybe set this to about like 15. Cool, something like that should be perfect. And let's go and make it editable again. Again, you don't need to make them editable. I'm just doing it just to kind of save some time. Let's go and let's set the axis to the center of it. Um, you won't have this over here, but if you just search for axis center, you'll get this. And we just want to center our axis in the middle over there. Cool, let's just scale this down a bit, just so that it's like just intersecting with them. Perfect. Cool, so let's create our animation over here. So we're gonna set a keyframe over here, go around like frame, I know, 60, and let's make this spin a bunch of times. Cool, let's just copy this over here. So that's um, when we swap over to our actual geometry, they do match up. Yes, that, that is, that is exactly what I was looking for. Thank you, Cinema 4D. Uh, obviously, this is on the wrong axis, uh, which, yeah, this one, okay. Cool. And now let's bring it together. Awesome. Cool. So let's go and let's grab our tire. And let's just move it a tiny bit off the ground, something like that. Let's create a ground plane over here. And let's go and go simulations. Actually, we don't need to do that just yet. Let's create another plane. And let's set this to about 20 and 20 over here. Let's bring this back. We can make it actually a little bit smaller. Let's also just move that to the side over here. Something like that uh, should be good. Let's just raise that up a bit. And on this, let's go simulations and let's go pyro emitter. Let's just make sure it's working. Cool. Now we have our flame going up. We don't want temperature for this, so let's go over here. Let's turn off our temperature. So now we're just going to get some density, which is going to be smoke over here. Let's go command D. Let's go into our simulation settings and let's set this to a voxel size of one for now. I think when it came to the rendering stage, when I rendered it, I think I rendered it at 0.5 or 0.7. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, either way, the project file will be up on Patreon if you want, but uh, for now, I'm just going to keep this to one just to make it a little bit easier over here. Cool, let's, I'm going to set this object fidelity to 100 and let's set the thickness over here. So you'll notice that when we press play, it starts out like this. If I had to set this thickness to one, it's just going to be a little bit small like that. So I want the thickness to end up being 10, but I don't want it to be 10 in the beginning because of the fact that in the render, that means as soon as we press play over here, we get this big thing over here and that, that does not look nice. So let's go to like around frame 12, set a keyframe over there, bring this back to about one over here. And nice, so now the smoke kind of grows, which is exactly what we want. Cool, we don't also, we also don't want it to run on all the frames because uh, according to our animation over here, the tires stop spinning at frame 60 and we want the smoke to stop spinning before then. So let's go over here set a keyframe over there and turn it off. So now she gets smoke that grows on, spins and then stops. Perfect, that is exactly what we want. Cool, let's go over here, let's go simulations, uh, collider, not collect, connector, uh, collider, and let's put this on our plane as well. We want friction, we want stick, we don't really care about balance. I mean, I, I actually don't even know if the stick will make a difference. Um, yeah, to be honest, things out smoke, I don't know if stick makes a difference. But hey, we'll turn it up anyways. And let's see what this is looking like. Nice, so now you can see that it is going with the tire over there. And now we're getting this pretty cool burnout over there. Um, we can actually also just turn up gravity over here. So for optimization's sake, um, let's just set up a camera over here. I think I used the focal length of like 110. And just go with something like that, just frame it up nicely. Cool, that's going to be our frame over here. So looking at this, this is cool and all, but we're getting smoke. Let me just go over here, perspective. We are in where is where tired? Okay, let me just let this run again. So, looking at our camera, it's going above and it's actually going a little bit below, to be honest. So, we want to just save some computing power. So, let's go over here, let's go into simulations, forces, and let's get a destructive force over here. Let's bring that up something around there. Let's duplicate it and bring it down just below over here. This will just mean that any smoke that actually goes into this destructor will stop working. Let me show you. See, as it goes, it disappears, which is exactly what we want because you don't see it up there. So we're just going to save some computing power. So looking at this, it looks cool. I just want to add a little bit more density. So let's set this to about 20. And let's also increase our stub, sub steps here. Maybe it's like three. Cool. I think I also set the sub steps here to around, around like three. Um, the only other thing that I really changed over here, this is also all up to you guys and the way that you want to art direct it. But uh, the way that we wanted it was that we wanted the smoke to be pretty thick in the beginning and then we wanted it to dissipate. So we can do that up here under the density tab with this dense uh, dissipation. So I'm going to set a keyframe over here and I'm going to make it three. So you'll see that if we have it at three, we're going to get a lot more thicker smoke that's not really going to fade away as quickly, which is exactly what we wanted. So you will see now it's nice and thick but then I wanted it to fade away by the end of the three seconds. So let's go over here and let's set it to something like 15. Let's see what that looks like. Awesome, and now it disappears. Uh, it doesn't disappear quite as fast. So let's say it's like, I don't know, 20 something like that, you guys can always mess around with it and change it to the way that you would like it. 
Cool, so let's see what this looks like now with our tire over here. Cool, now we're getting this really cool burnout. We're getting it that our smoke is actually going around the tire. We don't have gravity, so the only force that's really working on this is the initial force of the density going up and then also our tire spinning, which creates this really nice effect over here. Um, yeah, I think the only other things that I would change uh, if I'm spending a little bit more time, I'd drop down the voxel size over here and then just cash it out. Um, yeah, let me show you guys how I went about rendering this. Um, so let's go. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and that is pretty much the tutorial. I'm going to save the actual lighting and rendering part for Patreon. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can watch the rest of the video up on Patreon. But if not, I hope you enjoyed this little basic tutorial. Very basic. Again, I'm not the one who created a tire burnout. But yeah, I thought seeing as though no one's done it with Cinema 4D. But I'd show you guys how to do it with Cinema 4D. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.